seeds. This one I'm going to send around as a good example of what you're looking for when you're trying to find a milkweed seed. A milkweed seed to grow needs to have kind of a, a palpable belly on the seed itself. So it, it's something that you would be able to squeeze. There would be a little bit of give when you squeeze it. It means that the, the content of that seed has not been eaten by a bug or that it's uh, not an immature seed. So I'm going to send this around. In each milkweed pod, you are going to encounter more immature seeds at the lower and upper end of a pod. You, I have had the best luck with middle of the pod uh, milkweed seed germination. When I plant them, I note many, many scientific conditions from uh, temperature of germination rate to where they are on the seed pod if I collected the seed pods myself. Now, I grow some that I don't have that information for. But anyway, here's an example of one. Bugs will oftentimes, at when, especially the, the end that is not connected, bugs will attack that end of the seed pod and will sometimes also attack the area just inside the pod once it starts to open. That's the easy access for the, the bugs. So um, those seeds are often not viable. So these seeds have been refrigerated for about six weeks. Um, I put them in vermiculite. When I'm ready to harvest them, I'm going to put them in vermiculite and I'm going to add water just until it's moist. It should not be soppy. You should not be able to squeeze it out like a sponge. Uh, it should just be moist. Three to six weeks in the refrigerator simulates winter season for the seeds. And I've really not found a great difference between leaving them in three versus six. Some, a lot of things that I read prior to doing this said six weeks, but my data doesn't really show me the difference. So what you are going to be able to do, if you wish, everybody received a baggie. Um, you may, as we talk, Take some of this out. Could we use your baggie as an example? Could we use your baggie as an example? <laughs> okay. So, since you're only going to have, I, I would ask that you each only take one seed. I have checked these for viability, so everything that's in here should be viable. Um, about this much for one seed is going to be fine. Um, put your seed, put about this much in your baggie, put one seed in it, and close this up. When you get home, you can add enough water just to make it moist, put it in the refrigerator, I would say until the end of February, and then you can plant it in the pot of your shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's say let, three weeks. Three weeks. Three more weeks. I'm going to give you a seed. Please do because I went like ten seed. And if you are close to me. I would ask that uh, if it's between yourself and letting somebody else have one, if you live close, do you guys know who you are? Um, <laughs> please let me get you some seeds <laughs> to do this if we don't have enough here. 
This is Asclepias horridus. It is green milkweed. So the native milkweeds in our area, um, in the more coastal area, the Asclepias horridus, we have um, Incarnata, which is swamp milkweed in some of our coastal wetland prairie areas. Antelope horn is just a little further north. So if you're, um, you know, northern, far northern Houston and areas beyond, then that antelope horn would, would be, you would have that instead of the Asclepias viridis. Um, Linearis, um, so there's Whirl, there's Slim, uh, several others that are in our area. Most of them, in fact all of them, I use the same germination process for, except tropical, which I do not grow. I have some, but I don't propagate it. So if you collected some seed in Dallas, it wouldn't be viridis? It would not be viridis. Okay, so we are going to add water. Would you like to pass that back? Mm -hmm. that yes. <laughs> and then we'll pass the seeds next. Okay, so after the seeds have been in the refrigerator the three to six weeks, I dump them or I get them out. I usually allow them to stay in the baggie. I put it on my kitchen countertop and they begin to sprout like this. Um, I, once they begin sprouting, I take them out of there and put them into a pan. Now I do thousands, so that's why I have these big silver baking trays and things. The, when they get their second set of leaves, then it is time to transplant them. And I would recommend that if you're going to transplant, that maybe you put your smallest, after your, seed, after your seedling gets its second leaves, put it in something this size, and then move up to this size. I don't recommend something in between. In fact, I go from plug trays to this size. Most of the milkweed does not like to be transplanted very well when it's a seedling. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Many different milkweeds have a taproot. Viridis, the one you're getting seeds for tonight, has a taproot. This one is tuberosa. seedling. So while um, the root is growing, it is a very small, slender root. It's not capable of holding water for any length of time like this is. Um, you want to give this a good two years before you start moving it around and manipulating it. These guys I don't have any trouble, even the green milkweed, as long as I do not cut the taproot, I can move them around in my gardens. The seedlings, though, are very sensitive. Are yes. You, are you going to address the germination? 
germination conditions that you, I know you have a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. and, um, does time of year affect it? Um, what, what precautions would you advise for those of us who don't have greenhouses? Um, the reason, one of the reasons we're doing this at this time of year is because February is the optimum time for you to plant seeds or to germinate seeds and then plant them outside for this season. The seeds are going, normally, um, they're going to start coming up April, May, June. So this is the, when you get your seed out after it's germinated and you're ready to plant it somewhere, um, that's going to be that March, April time frame that will be optimum you know, for our area. If you don't have a greenhouse, it is fine to plant it in a pot that gets water. So, um, and they would also grow in a garden as long as they get regular water. But again, remember how, what I showed you this root looks like. That root needs regular water. And we'll address that a little bit further uh, in another slide. Did that answer your question? Mostly, I was just wondering, like, if, could you do this process later in the summer with the heat alone, just even if you had it in a pot, would the heat alone make it impossible for it to dry? No, I've done them, um, I've done two sets of 4,700 in, one year, and 4,700 is what um, govern. that's governed by the number of plug trays and things I have to, the space I have to work with. So, her question was, could she do this later in the year? Optimum time to grow is going to be in the springtime. However, some of the viridis especially uh, also blooms a second time later in the fall. So you could grow and plant the seedlings later in the fall as well. They, once they're in the ground, they are going to acclimate to their natural dormancy period and all of that. So if you do plant them in the ground, um, water them, give them a good two years before you call them gone, please. This tray that you see here is actually the second germination. So of a bag of seeds that I put in the refrigerator, when you'll have hundreds of them that, you know, if you plant hundreds of seeds, you'll have hundreds of seedlings that, that germinate. And of course there's some seeds in there that you'll notice have not yet. I always save that tray and just let it sit in the kitchen with a plastic cover. I put saran wrap over it. And lo and behold, within four to six weeks, whatever or many of what did not germinate the first time around does the second time. Now I get about 93% germination rate, which is pretty high. And part of that I think is uh, giving the second germination guys a chance. Okay, so then once they've developed their second leaf, their second set of leaves, then it's time to plant them somewhere else. Um, when I first started, I used these little guys that you wet, these little pods that you put in water to grow. Um, and then shortly after I realized how costly that was going to be if I was growing 4,700 at a time and went to something else. I use a mix. When I get to this point, I use three parts vermiculite to one part um, perlite and one part soil. And you'll hear me as we go forward refer to aged soil. I don't use the bag of soil, um, the bag of soil that you would buy at the grocery store or at the 
Home Depot or whatever, I don't consider to be aged soil. I use it to mix into other soil. But when I talk about a mix that I use for growing, it is vermiculite, perlite, and aged soil. What is the source of aged soil? Um, it is it is soil that I that has settled down that has um, I put it in raised beds, so I will just dump bags of that soil that I purchased um, in raised beds. I also add compost to it, and I add clay. And the way I get that is just by um, digging soil from various places, uh, bringing a pile of it home, and mixing it into these different kinds of soil. So in my raised beds, I'll have, um, I have sandy soil mixes, and then I have other, you know, whatever the optimum for the particular milkweed that I'm growing, I create that soil mix. Because I'm being asked to do some that are, um, that are native to Texas, but not native to our area. So I mix up the soil for those areas. Um, so again, we're at this point now, I have them in here, and I am going to take them out, and I usually put four or five seeds in each pod, and most of them do grow, and I'm going to take one pod out, and I'm going to put it in one pod. And of those four to five seedlings I put in there, I have a good, you know, uh, good success rate as we get to two years. So in this pot, they will remain um, for the first two years of their lives. The one year seedlings, if you plant them and you don't give them, well, we, One of the things that people who have been able to germinate have asked over and over is, okay, we got the seedlings to germinate, now how do you keep them growing year after year? And my advice is that you have to make sure they stay watered. If you have planted your seedlings in, especially if you've planted them in a non-aged soil, um, the water is going to run through and get very dry very quickly if you have them in a pot. And they are going to require more water than they would, you know, they're going to require a steady supply of water for that little tiny root that you saw to grow enough to turn into a tap root. So, I feel, like you almost have to take the milkweed on vacation with you, you know? You either have to have, <laughs> I have all these babies, you know, and you can't, you can't not water them. So you must, if you want them to grow to that two year mark, you have to make sure that you set up a watering system that's going to take care of it. Or, and it can't be, it can't, be as strong as some of the uh, sprinkler systems that you have in your yard because it's just going to push them over or break the stem. So you need to choose optimum locations when you set these pots out to grow. You saw the tuberosa taproot that I have in the baggies that were maybe five inches, the tap root can get 18 inches. In both of these, the tuberosa, and this was, um, oh, the Asclepius incarnata is the second one. So those tap roots can grow 18 inches. Um, you want to keep them in here until you have a good root system down to the bottom of the pot 
that's usually two to three years. After, you know, three year plants can be moved around and put in different places and they do well. We have some at Brazos Bend, we did a Monarch way station there. We put two year uh, milkweed in, it did really well, moved it around a couple of times until we found optimum places for it. So after that two year mark, and especially three years, then the milkweed can be moved around uh, until you find the exact place for it. However, then you hit this next growth period where your taproot and the, the roots themselves that hang off that taproot begin to grow. There are studies that show um, tuberosa roots, now this is not the taproot, but the roots grow 77 inches in a prairie. So you want to find a place where those roots can grow undisturbed, where you're not going to be digging them up um, and moving them. That's not to say you can't separate some pieces off of them, though, to start other milkweed. You'll still find that if they're not watered enough, if, if, um, if you've noticed the natural locations of milkweed, it's often the ditches. Somebody before the meeting talked to me about seeing it in the ditches. Well, the ditches naturally have drainage water pretty frequently. So that's a good area for them to grow. They get watered well there. And it's also a silty, sandy mix. And so the water drains out. It doesn't just lay there year round. That's an optimum for some of the kinds of some milkweed we're talking about. Um, you can baby them less, but I would still say until you have the beginning of a taproot, they are subject to too little water. And if 